Hey guys, Pastor Ben here with another review and reflection. Today I want to talk about a book that I just finished reading uh, called The Westminster Assembly, Reading Its Theology in Historical Context by Bob Lethem, Robert Lethem. Uh, this is a book that has been out for a number of years now. It was published in 2009 originally, put out by uh, PNR, and it's part of the, uh, the series that PNR did uh, called the Westminster Assembly and the Reformed Faith. They've all the covers all have a similar look to them. This is an incredibly significant work, and I'm excited to do a review and reflection on it today. So let's dive in. Okay, so what Lethem is doing in this book is uh, really, I would suggest, two things. Um, one is uh, trying to give uh, us a kind of big picture approach to how we should approach the um, historical context of the Westminster Assembly at kind of a macro level. What exactly led to the formation of the Westminster Assembly? What was their task? What were some of the challenges that they faced? And uh, in some important ways, as I'll talk about in a minute, trying to sort of set the story straight uh, in, some, in some areas where there's a, maybe a narrative that many of us grew up with uh, that, that needs to be refined. So, so that's a part of what he's doing in this book, is trying to really put the work of the assembly as a whole in its historical context. And then secondly, also trying to show how that different paradigm or perspective can help us to understand the finished product of the assembly, looking at the um, Westminster Confession, as well as the larger and shorter catechisms. So what exactly is he doing in this book? Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Well, uh, Lethem, of course, is a, um, an English uh, theologian himself, a very gifted scholar. His grasp of the sources, not only of the Puritan period, but of the patristic period, of the medieval period, of uh, systematic theology in general, historical theology in particular, is incredibly impressive. Um, Lethem is one of those guys that I think everyone who reads one of his books probably finds some things that they disagree with. He, he likes to be a bit provocative. Uh, at times, and so there's always things that leave you kind of either scratching your head or saying, no, I don't agree with where he's going with that. But uh, he is always worth reading because he is so steeped in the sources and is going to push you to think more clearly uh, as, a, as a theologian yourself. And uh, that is true of this book as well. And he's really um, drawing on all of his learning and reading in the areas of patristic theology, Puritan theology, historical theology in general, to help uh, situate the Westminster Assembly in its historical context. And, and he's specifically trying to, um, I think, uh, push us back to some of the sources in this, um, because uh, the, the way that the Westminster Assembly has been written about from th down through the years has often been um, from the lens of either Scottish Presbyterianism uh, or American Presbyterianism. Uh, and, and of course, part of the reason for that is because uh, while the assembly, Westminster Assembly itself, took place in England uh, in the 17th century, after the restoration of the monarchy, uh, the documents of the Westminster Assembly weren't adopted by the Church of England. Uh, rather, the, the, the documents that the assembly produced were largely adopted by the Church of Scotland uh, and the various Presbyterian churches that came from that, and of course, uh, the Reformation uh, diaspora in, in the United States as well. So uh, a, a lot of the um, inheritors of the work of the assembly were either in Scotland or in America, but in England it had a very kind of tenuous mixed legacy. It was certainly not the mainstream in terms of church life or theological perspective. Now, the, the, the kind of ramifications of that from a perspective of historical theology is that a lot of the you know commentaries, for example, on the Westminster Confession uh, that have been written over the years have been written with a kind of Scottish accent or an American accent, often passing over or ignoring um, some of the uniquely English elements of the Westminster Assembly and some of the unique historical and political context that gave rise to the Westminster Assembly as a whole. So uh, what that does at times is to maybe obscure the issues or debates that the assembly was actually having at the time and to import back debates that were happening in Scotland in the you know, 17 or 1800s uh, or in America in the 1800s or 
uh, the, the 20th century, the 1900s. And so um, Lethem is trying to push us back into those 17th century sources in England to say, let's understand the Westminster Assembly on their own terms. Now, I should say this um, right at the get-go, and, and you can probably already pick up on this, even in the way I'm describing this. Um, this book is, I think, very important, well worth the read. This is not a book for everyone. Um, this is a scholarly book. Um, Lethem goes into extensive and intricate details of uh, the documents of the Westminster Assembly, the context of the Westminster Assembly. If you do not have a solid grasp of church history in general, and of uh, the Puritan era in particular, you're probably going to be frustrated by this book. He also is going to be quoting from a variety of theologians and sources, not only um, theologians contemporary to the Puritans, but later interpreters of the Puritans. He's going to reference, you know, the Calvin versus the Calvinist debate and the theology and historical approach of uh, figures like T.F. Torrance or Karl Barth. So if those are not names that mean much to you, probably this book won't be very helpful. He'll also have quotations in Latin that he just doesn't bother to translate. He assumes you know what's going on. So this has more of a niche um, value than other books. So if you are a an interested layperson who wants to understand the theology of the Westminster Assembly, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book, even though I think it's a great book. I would recommend something like Chad Van Dixhorn's uh, book, Confessing the Faith, which is going to kind of go through the confession chapter by chapter and help you understand biblically and theologically and practically what's being communicated here. And uh, Van Dixhorn is going to, you know, have the historical perspective in the back of his mind that Lethem is laying out here, but he's not going to belabor the point and make it explicit. So who would find this book useful? Well, I think it would be most useful for um, scholars who are doing work in historical theology, obviously, and working with the Westminster Assembly, this is probably a good kind of intro volume at that level. If you're wanting to dig deeper into one of the um, Westminster divines or into some aspect of historical theology, Lethem is going to kind of give a lay of the land and point you to a lot of sources that you can dive into more deeply. Um, if you are a pastor like myself, who's not doing, you know, scholarly work, but who wants a better understanding of the context of our confessional documents that, for example, we in the OPC or the PCA or other denominations would hold to, this is going to be a valuable book, although um, I'll, I'll give a, another kind of comment about that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of this uh, review and reflection, Lethem is really doing two things. The first thing is what I kind of talked about already. He's trying to correct some misconceptions that maybe the traditional historiography has um, has uh, passed down to us and trying to help us understand the assembly in its own context. And he makes that argument really in the first 100 to 120 pages of the book. Um, that's the part of the book that's probably the easiest read and probably going to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of helping you to think a bit more um, intentionally and, and in a nuanced way about the history of the Westminster Assembly. So I would suggest every pastor, certainly if you're in a in a Reformed church, you should read the first 120 pages of this book because it's going to help you to get a better grasp of the history of behind the Westminster Assembly and, and of the Puritans. Um, but the other 250 to 300 pages of the book, he is in essence going chapter by chapter through uh, the confession while also keeping an eye on the larger catechism and the shorter catechism. That's one of the strengths of this book is that he really views the Westminster um, standards as a whole and is going to walk you through what's the historical background to the positions at which they arrived. And he's going to do that by um, looking at the patristic debates about these things, looking at what was going on in Reformed theology in the continent. Uh, of course, you know, there are many Reformed confessions that preceded uh, the Westminster Confession. The Westminster Confession is really a very late Reformed document. Uh, it's a kind of full flowering, I would say. Uh, but there are a whole lot of uh, Reformed confessions and creeds and things that were in circulation and in use. And the divines were in conversation with all of those things and were in conversation with for example, uh, their Dutch counterparts, um, different theologians um, in the German Reformed context, and uh, you know, all over. There, there's a global Reformed 
uh, conversation that's taking place, and the assembly is part of that. The divines are very much part of that. And so he has a, a good grounding in those conversations and draws on all of that scholarship to say, here's what was going on. Here's who had written books about these things. Here's the questions that they debated. Here's the positions they came to. And there's some areas where they kind of adopt a kind of studied ambiguity of saying, okay, well, we don't have 100% unity on this, so let's frame it in, in such a way that it allows for a variety of views. And if you're not aware of that debate, you're going to kind of miss some of those nuances. So Lethem is a very helpful guide to kind of filling you in on the backstory uh, and conversations that led to the Westminster Confession as we have it today. Having said that, what I did with this book was sat down and over the course of many, many, many months, I think it might have even taken me a year I, I read through the whole thing. Um, having done that now, I think I would suggest, like I said, if you're doing historical theology in this field, yeah, you need to do that um, so that you know the whole lay of the land. If you're a pastor, I would read the first 120 pages. And then if there's something that you're curious about theologically, or maybe if you're teaching uh, on the confession, um, I, would, I would grab Lethem. And I would grab, you know, Van Dixhorn or something, you know, whatever your favorite commentary is on the confession. There are a lot of great ones out there. And I would read, you know, the, the kind of popular commentary to get a good biblical, theological, practical um, explanation of what the confession is saying. And then I would look at what Lethem has to say just so that you can know, is there anything in the historical context that would help me to teach, you know, this chapter or to understand it better myself? But I'd use it more like a, as a reference. So I, I would say everybody who's interested in these things, if, you're, if you've watched this video this far, you're probably safe to read this. Uh, but uh, anyone who's interested in these things should, should read the first 100, 120 pages just to get the kind of historical argument at a macro level. But beyond that, I would suggest using the book as more of a reference to kind of dive into particular points of um, Westminster theology to get that historical background fleshed out. Having said that, this is a really valuable book. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it, if you're familiar with these discussions and things, you'll know that there's a lot of work that has been done in this area since 2009 when Lethem wrote this book. And so there's, there's, certain, there's certain areas where it maybe feels like, you know, we could almost do with a second edition because the bibliography could be greatly expanded just one small example of that, and, and Lethem actually mentions this in the very beginning of the book. Um, he is writing this book before Chad Van Dixhorn um, finished editing and publishing the five-volume Minutes and Papers of the Westminster Assembly, which Oxford uh, put out a number of years ago. Um, Lethem was aware of that work, though, and so he, he had to cite things in such a way that you could still find it in that work, but it hadn't come out yet. So now it would be great to have that updated so it's a bit more streamlined in terms of citation. There's a lot of journal articles that people are writing out of that. There's a lot of a number of critical editions of the Confession, the larger catechism, various monographs and things that scholars are writing. This is really an area of scholarship that's flowering. There's a lot going on, um, a lot that's been written, a lot that is being written. And um, so uh, Lethem's book, uh, I think, would, would fit nicely with that. In fact, I think Lethem's book is probably one of the um, more popular scholarly sources that has helped to produce an interest in these things. Um, but uh, it, it's definitely something that is worth reading. So what are my kind of final thoughts? Um, I think it's in a very valuable book. I wouldn't agree with everything Lethem says. He does a good job in general, I would say, of, of keeping his historian hat on and trying to just walk us through what are the debates, what are the various views. There are some times where we get a little bit of his own views coming out, and he's usually self-aware about that. Um, but there are some times where you can tell he's got a bit of a dog in, in the race in terms of, you know, diving back into the debate. And you can tell who his, his favorite side is, and sometimes they win and sometimes they don't, and he'll comment on that. And I wouldn't line up with him on all of those things um, necessarily. But uh, he's, as I said at the beginning, a very learned uh, uh, scholar, a very gifted um um, historian and is well worth reading. So if you're interested in historical theology, if you want to understand the Westminster Assembly better and the Westminster Confession better, uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to do better than picking up uh, Bob Lethem's book, The Westminster Assembly, 
reading its theology and historical context. So that's my review and reflection for this book.